The Twins were absolutely throttled in the finale, so it's going to be no go for a sweep. But they still took two of three out of the Royals heading into Monday's off day. We got a lot of ground to cover here with Dave Brown. This is Locked On Twins. You are Locked On Twins. Your daily Minnesota Twins podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello again and welcome back to Locked on Twins. I'm your host, Brandon underscore. No, why am I saying Brandon? I'm your host, Brandon Warren, and you can unfollow me on Twitter at Brandon underscore W-A-R-N-E. And while you're doing that, skidoodle over to at Answer Dave Brown. Follow him. What's up, Dave Brown? I don't you know mean, what's going on. My brain's Dave scrambled. underscore Brown, apparently. that's uh, We are taking over. Our names are now whatever... You know, we say our emails or Twitter handles are. It's uh, life has reversed itself. Yeah, it's Easter got Easter got my brain scrambled like some Easter eggs, but we soldiered on nevertheless. Thanks for making Locked On Twins your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Also, we're on YouTube. You can find us on the YouTubes. We're waving at you. We're saying hi. We're having a lot of fun here. If you're watching us on YouTube, first of all, thank you. Second of all, please feel free to give us a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button, leave a comment, all that fun stuff. We'd love to hear from you because you are a big reason why our show exists. And so we'd love to hear from you. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you'll get 200 bucks in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Also... Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Do you ever have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Well, you can make the switch to Locked On Sports today because it's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, and it's streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. More on that app later in the show. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So you can check us out again. It's Locked On Sports today, streaming 24-7. So if you're I thought up, we were the morons on the app. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, no question about that. Uh, no, the morons on the app are the people who are ready to designate Bailey Ober for assignment after one tough start. Now, again, that's a bit hyperbolic or hyperbaric if you um, are a, a mixed metaphor guy like me. But... There, there are people who are convinced that this was some sort of must-win game. I don't know. I feel like we're dropping you in the deep end of Twins Twitter without much preparation. We're not giving you water wings. We're not giving you floaties. We're not giving you one of those goofy paddle boards. Uh, you're just kind of on your own. What, what do you see during a game like this that uh, you weren't expecting? Well, admittedly, I think uh... – Bailey was dropping some floaters today or yeah. some floaties in the pool. Uh, it, it wasn't what, you know, it wasn't what you wanted. <clears throat> and to be totally transparent, not see-through, maybe more mm -hmm. like opaque. Or um, I, I watched the highlights today. I had Easter with my family. So I didn't, <clears throat> I wasn't at the park. I didn't sit down and, and watch mm -hmm. the entire game like a lot of uh, people do and like I usually do. So I'm just going by the highlights and, and what everybody says. It's funny though on Twitter, it's like, why is everyone yelling at each other? It was a, it was not a good mood uh, during the game. I did I did kind of monitor Twitter while the the, the the Royals were compounding runs, and people were very unhappy with Bailey. And it's uh, it's okay to be unhappy with the one start. I'm sure he was yeah. too. Uh, but we're not throwing the Bailey out with the bath water. Um, <laughs> he's uh, He's got like a 360 ERA in his career coming into this game. So we're going to stick with him for, for a while. Hopefully yeah. a start like this never happens again. It never happened before either. And uh, and we'll just try and get better in the next one. Would now be a good time for me to propose a trade for Bailey Ober in our fantasy league? It depends. It's like, you know, am I going to be underselling him now? Am I selling low? Or, you know, all the, the psychological, the mental – trade wars begin with the fantasy thing uh -huh. now one game in so send me an offer uh, brandon I'll, I'll listen to what you got make you an offer you probably will refuse um 
Yeah, a lot going on in this one, though. 11-0, Twins 0 for 6 with runners in scoring position. And I mean to tell you, um, Bobby Witt Jr. is special, man. And I mean, not that we're surprised by it. The guy signed an extension for all of the money. But holy smokes, that guy can play baseball. The uh, He can. He's uh, he's in the club. Yeah. Uh, yeah they like him. Uh, they're, he, he's, he's a good ball player. We, we sort of knew that he had – the genes and the talent and the athleticism and uh, the right attitude. It's just a matter of that learning curve shortening a little bit. Cause he's got, you know, he'll strike out once in a while and uh, doesn't walk as much as uh, I'd like, or some other also, people, also but... doesn't like when you ask him about the twins, apparently. Oh, we're going to air that dirty laundry. Well, before the series, I think it was opening day. I went over to the, uh, the Royal side of the clubhouse to see, uh, Hey, uh, Bobby, Vinny Pasquantino, you know, what do you think of this team that you're playing? And they did, it was like, I was asking them about their third grade report card. It was, uh, or their they, third marriage. They didn't know, uh, know that, but I don't think they're on that one yet, but no. Um, and it was just, uh, they were not happy to hear from me. I, maybe it was me. I was mm -hmm. like, you know, I kind of wanted to ask the twins off the record. Hey, did the Royals not like you guys very much? Because they didn't want to, you know, I, and my question was, very, I had video of it, but I erased it. It was just not, it was not really usable what I well, got back. And it was, they were not interested in, we're just going to focus on ourselves. And which is, I mean, that's great to say <laughs> to a certain extent, but, you know, you are playing somebody. It's not just you play with yourself out there, so to speak. <laughs> Woo. Um. Yeah, I I, uh, I used to do these card breaks, and the, the guy was really bad at pronouncing names, and he always called them Vinny Pasquini, so that's always stuck in my head. That's funny, though. Vinny Pasquini. Uh, it reminds that. me, though, of that time Eno Saris went into the clubhouse oh, boy. and confused. <laughs> didn't he confuse Eric Hosmer and Mike Moustakas, and he said something about, yeah, I got a Greek family member, and Hosmer looked at him like he had three heads, which... Yeah, I want to say Billy Butler was in on this too, uh, and I want to say I was there when some of this happened. I think I was because I I remember it clearly, and um, or maybe I just was consoling Eno because it was just kind of an unfortunate. He's grown up a lot, you know. The players like to talk to him a lot more than the Royals did that day. That was like ten years ago, so that's uh, that's uh, that's under the bridge. But that was that's I I think about that sometimes when I go in there. I'm like, well, this is where Eno got the crap kicked out of him that one time by the Royals. So. Well, um, they're not, be, they're not bad guys. It's just, I must've asked the question at the wrong time. Well, and for, for in Eno's case, like I know I had to learn too, that you can't just drop word vomit on these guys. You have to kind of know how to work the room work. The, you know, I, I went up to Glenn Perkins one time and asked him how he used saber metrics on the mound. And he looked at me like I had two heads and it was because I deserved it. It was like, he doesn't use that. He knows what it means, but it's, doesn't give two squirts about if that's going to help him throw a back foot slider past Casey McGee of the Brewers. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, I like it, your it, reference there. That's a, uh, I haven't thought of Casey McGee maybe since he, he played against Glenn Perkins, but no, yeah, there's but, a, there's a nuance to talking to these guys yep. and somewhat sometimes it's more like a nuance. you know, we don't, we don't want to talk to you. So I, I get that sometimes it's it must be me. It's me. It's me. I'm the bad guy. Kick my butt. No, no, uh, aren't you supposed to be doing like it's me? I'm the problem. It's me. I think Remy would be uh, oh, really proud of you. But yeah, and and Claire, Claire's more of the uh, oh, the I'm sorry, I got the Taylor fan than Remy is, but uh, Remy would be proud too. Uh, yeah, and he appreciates the shout out. Well, uh, I think I heard your wife shout to him during the <laughs> during the show the other day. So uh, right, was, that was somebody uh, shouting, but we're fine here though. Don't good. worry about it. Yeah, no, we're all good. Um. If it feels like we're kind of dancing around the subject of the Twins played a game today, uh, it might be because the Twins played a game today, technically speaking, but an 11-0 beatdown, uh, a lot of ground to cover. Bailey Ober, though, I, I feel like he couldn't put anybody away with two strikes, uh, just a lot of hard-hit contact. Uh, now, with that said, what did he face? Uh, 14 batters, eight of them first pitch strikes. Wasn't in there for very long. It was a pretty early shower for the tall man. Um, I don't know. I think and that those showers are like they come up to here. Yeah, because he's so tall, and it's a got that's got to be a difficult. Can you imagine being Bailey Ober and like trying to shower after that? And it's just like the 
shower head comes up, you know, and you got to like bend down. It's uh, that's a rough Mo day. More like Bailey under. Anyway, uh, let's talk about FanDuel here. We'll go to our first break. When we come back, I want to talk about the Royals because I, I don't know if you remember, but I was pretty big on Brady Singer coming into this season, wasn't I? You were. I had yeah. uh, forgotten that he was good a couple years ago, but he was so, good today too. Yeah, we'll take a look at that. But first, a word from FanDuel and a word from our new friends at LinkedIn. Anyhow, the sports calendar right now is loaded. FanDuel is making it even more exciting to get in on the action. We are down to the final four. We are into the must-win part of the calendar for the Twins, apparently. It's better <laughs> to be believed. The Vikings are about to draft maybe two players in the first round. I guess maybe they don't care about that. But right now, new customers on FanDuel get 200 bucks in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. So you, whatever you want to bet on, if that first $5 bet hits, you got basically 200 bucks in free play. That's 200 bucks you can use to bet on the tournament, MLB, NBA, NHL, and so much more. So again, all those different things. And again, 200 bucks in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to make your first bet a big win. FanDuel is America's number one sports. Also, we have some uh, some fun words from LinkedIn. Are you struggling to close deals? Because B2B selling is tougher than ever. And that's why I want to tell you about LinkedIn Sales Navigator. It's a sales intelligent platform that helps professionals effectively prospect and engage high value customers, driving higher revenue and increasing your sales performance. It also helps you target the right buyers surface key signals such as job changes or which accounts you should prioritize and shows you hidden allies you can use to find the buyers most likely to convert. It's fueled by LinkedIn's 1 billion member platform. Sales Navigator gives you the most up-to-date first-party data, enabling you to unlock conversations with people who matter. Right now, you can try LinkedIn Sales Navigator and get a 60-day free trial at linkedin.com. Slash locked on. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on. It's a 60 day free trial. Your trial could last longer than Royce Lewis is away from the twins. Think about that. That's a long trial. So let LinkedIn Sales Navigator help you sell like a superstar today. Just go to LinkedIn.com slash locked on and get started. Dave, Brady Singer was exceptional. I felt like Maybe my favorite thing about him was he really seemed to be able to put his slider where he wanted to in um, situations that he wanted to use it. Uh, two batters hit. That's uh, how many batters have been hit? Was that six batters hit in the series or it something was, like it that? It was like, four coming into uh, Twins, we're talking. It was four guys through yesterday and two more well, today. That, Rocco that's, said yesterday he thought it was a coincidence. I didn't see the HBPs today, though. That's given some credence, though, to the idea that Vinny Pasquini and Bobby Witt Jr. don't like the Twins. <laughs> it's, it's just a couple of are, teams that don't like each other. Black and blue you, division, et cetera, et cetera. You are, you are connecting some dots from way over there, but uh, sure. Let's from way downtown. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't think it's, it's just weird. I, it's, uh, you know, it's the kind of thing that, you know, if I could – well, I, I don't want to swear, but there's a term in baseball that we, you know, we, we've used some terms before that mm -hmm. aren't really there. It's called red asses. And there's some red asses in baseball. And if they get yep. the feeling that their, their teams are being hit too much, things can escalate. Uh, you know, it, I don't know if that's what's going on. It wouldn't surprise me if uh, some Royals got plunked the next time, though. I'm not saying that's the right thing to do. I'm just saying it wouldn't surprise me. I think Mark Kerrig from The Athletic says it's a case of the ass as kind of a shorthand. <laughs> it just cracks me up because Kerrig is uh, he's a really good dude, really funny guy. But We're approaching yeah, PG-13, Brandon. Careful. Well, that, yeah. Uh, well, but I'm mentally about 13, so that should mm. tell you um, I don't where we're at here. But, yeah, I, I like the inside baseball references, too, because it just kind of gives you an idea of the fact that these are just grown men who are basically grown boys playing a game. Well, look at them out there. They're dressed like they're in their jammies. They're yeah, playing exactly. Ball. 
Um, so yeah, Brady Singer, good. Um, <laughs> Jordan Lyles gets in on the action. If he's going to pitch when they're up 11 0, he probably isn't going to pitch too much this year. But, um, you know, Cody Funderburk was all right. Uh, Daniel Duarte, though, I'm really eager to see where it goes from here. 31 pitches, 21 strikes, two strikeouts. Um, that's great. The velo, was anyway. popping. the velo was popping. I saw at least 197, but I like the secondaries too. Uh, I just think there might be something there. And I, I well, never really know what, what makes guys go from that one level to the next. The twins did that with Casey Fien and he went from completely off the radar to pretty good setup, man. I don't know what is the special ingredient that makes pitchers do that, but it seems like one, the twins are pretty good at it. And two, um, we shouldn't judge a book by its cover when a guy comes up for the first time. You know, I think time, uh, experience, uh, maybe a little bit of desperation. Yep. Uh, they're probably, you know, the, the, their internal clock's ticking. Oh, I better get this down or else I'm not going to get another chance. Uh, he obviously has good stuff talking about Duarte. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, your the strike percentage today is pretty good. And certainly when he's struggled in the past, it's been a lot closer to even. So that's uh, – that, that, that's something that we can take as a plus. Uh, Funderburg, I don't, I'm not sure how he did overall. That Witt, uh, Witt's home run was uh, a P. It was 430-something to center and 110-something off the bat. About I'm doing this from memory. But mm -hmm. I looked. It was really low. It was, uh, I think it was an off-speed pitch or a change-up maybe. Uh, and it was really low. It was below the strike zone for sure. And he just went down and got it. And even, uh, you know, I'm not trying to, like, say Bailey Ober had a even a mediocre day. But, you know, Sal Perez's homer that started this all, it wasn't a terrible pitch. Uh, he, Bailey Ober threw plenty of other pitches that were worse than that one. And that mm -hmm. just kind of got everything off on the wrong foot. Sometimes the, the Royals, uh, the Royals, you know, they, they didn't play, like, great in the first two games, but they, they played alert and intense, and the, the Twins were – uh, not fortunate, but they were, you know, they had to fight to win those games. It was a pretty good opening series. I, I like how, how, how the Royals are improved and how could you actually not be improved after going 56 and 106. But, yeah. um, you know, th there's something to say for their attitude too. It's a, it's a two team game out there. Yeah. I think things went sideways pretty quickly with that Salvi Salvo that he fired in the first inning and from that point on it was just kind of academic but i think yeah i think you can see some growth from the royals i think you see the difference between though a team that's a little more complete and a team that's trying to get to that level yeah and that's that's maybe the most obvious in the second game of the series when you know the twins put it away late and also too you know kind of a weird dichotomy is that they did it against will smith who is I mean, he's got to be the oldest guy on the Royals right now. I mean, I don't think Salvi's even as old as he is. I do so, not I mean, remember Will Smith on the Twins. You mentioned in passing that he was he's an ex-twin. No, 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 and he's not. He's not. He's not? No, well, no, no. Do they have some other guy in the bullpen who is? And I'm, that's what I'm confusing? He, Will Smith was never on the Twins, even no. for like an hour? No, no, none of that Isaiah kiner um Can we edit that out of the final broadcast? No, so we can't. Count. Actually, no Jesse Chavez, no Jaime Garcia. Who? I wonder who we're thinking about that. But anyway. I don't um, know. Well, no, anyway. it, would, it would have been somebody on the Royals. So, I don't know. Uh, it's I'll not Seth Lugo. No, no a, lot of, a lot of fans wanted him, though. Um, I think I did. Yes, you did. Uh, Singer is, is uh, at a solid game. The, the Royals, they haven't had a lot of um, great results with their new -er, uh, pitching coaches, Brian Sweeney being a guy who was on uh, Cleveland and helped develop that staff, helped yeah. and helped a lot. Uh, but I think that has something to do with Singer uh, kind of getting back on the schneid. Last year was, uh, two years ago, was mostly a very good growth year for him. Last year, World Baseball Classic. He was on that team. He's on Team USA. He didn't do very well. Mm -hmm. And then he got off to, you know, in and out of camp and all those kind of excuses that are legitimate. And uh, this year, no such beast. And 
Um, it, it's not, I think by the end of the season, two things. We'll look back and say, it isn't the end of the world to have been beaten by Brady Singer if we're still talking about this game. And yeah. Bailey Ober is going to have a lot more better games than this. Nick Anderson is the former twin in the bullpen. He's from oh, Minnesota. I, all right. You, he, he was traded to the Marlins for a third baseman prospect named, I think it's Brian Shales, who never never made the big leagues or anything like that. But mm -hmm. hey, um, speaking of major league debuts, I want to talk about Austin Martin when we come back on the other side of this break because you have furnished us a video. So I'll let you set that up when we come back all and right. we will – Share some more of your wonderful video goodness. But again, first, a word from Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV and um, offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the dumb TVs needing an Amazon Fire TV stick which you just plug in and it gives you access to millions of movies, TV episodes, as well as free and live television. So if it's, you know, the first week of baseball, a college basketball tournament, which is winding down, or NBA going down to the wire for uh, postseason seating and getting into those play-in games, that sort of thing, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV, though, recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on the latest in the world of sports, whether it's, again, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and so much more, not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, even cooking videos. Dave Brown, check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels yet, you should. Trust me on this to learn more, visit Amazon.com slash Locked on Fire TV. All right, we're coming down the home stretch, Dave. You have an Austin Martin uh, clip here. He debuted in game two of the series, pinch run, one, I think one inning defense in left field, and then started in center today. Um, 0 for 3, crashed into the fence. All things considered, it's still a big league debut, and he's still going to remember it for the rest of his life. Yes, I'm uh, glad uh, when he crashed into the fence, he did most of the crashing with his lower body. It wasn't like jamming his shoulder into the uh, the scoreboard fence that they have out there. So I don't know mm -hmm. how comfortable or uncomfortable it is. It doesn't, you know, probably, in the, not. In the, probably not. You know, in the old days, you know, it was like brick or stone. And then, you know, they added padding and that was better. Uh, thank you, OSHA and the union. Mm -hmm. uh, and today they have like scoreboards out there. And when they, that's, this would be a good question to ask a player. Uh, you know, I'm not going to like tell them about Greek family members that I have when I ask them, but I'm going to, does it hurt to run into the wall, especially when it's like a scoreboard and stuff? You know, I'll try and form it better than that when I actually ask. But um, so, yeah, it was kind of a strange debut. It was a strange situation in a way for Austin because uh, he was replacing on the roster a very good friend of his named Royce Lewis. They've known each other for since even longer than 10 years, but 10 years ago, they were on uh, a team USA U14 or something U15 team. And, uh, you know, they, they played together. And for a while we're told by the manager that, you know, uh, they, they weren't going to amount to anything unless they improved and they're, I'm not going to play yet. So, uh, you know, he, he showed, they showed him apparently. At I, the end. But I wonder who those players were that they played over eventually. That'd be a fun follow-up. They didn't uh, – we asked – somebody asked, well, who's the manager? And I think it's a Royce. And Royce isn't going to throw anybody under the bus. So um, they, they, didn't, they didn't reveal – I think with some detective work we could figure it out. But um, no. But so it was kind of a – it was a bittersweet. You know, he's excited to be here kind of thing, Austin Martin. But he was sad for his friend, Royce Lewis, who's having a tough time with the, uh, with the quad injury. Uh, and it was funny a few days before, uh, on the internet somewhere, I couldn't find it again when I went back to look assembling this video, but, uh, he got, uh, Austin got an apartment that is across the street. Brand new. brand new, yeah, brand new building. Okay. Across the street, or across the train tracks, maybe from uh, target field. It's, it almost looks like, you know, if he were Spider-Man, he could take I think a flying it's, I think it's fifth street. It's literally across the street though. Okay. Uh, it, 
very, very close, close by, almost like he could look into Derek Falvey's office to see what was going on if he wanted. But uh, so uh, that was uh, kind of part of the setup for the interview, talking about his relationship with Royce and uh, this apartment that he, he got and, and why he got one so close to the field. And uh, I asked him a couple other kind of silly-ish questions, not about Greek heritage, but uh, some good Austin Martin type things. And I think we can, uh, if you want to play it, we can do that. Yeah, let's roll that beautiful bean footage. We are good. All right, Austin, what were the emotions like when you got the news? Um, yeah. There's a lot of emotions. It was uh, kind of crazy, kind of uh, unexpected a little bit, um, given the circumstances. But obviously, I'm grateful to be here, and I just want to – do as much as I can to help this ball club win baseball games. When did you get the phone call? Who told you and who did you then call first? So Toby, our uh, AAA manager, gave me the call yesterday around, say, 1030 in the morning. I was just sitting on the couch drinking a coffee, asked me how my morning is going. I told him, I mean, it was going well, just sitting relaxing before I have to go to the field uh, for our practice. And he pretty much told me, he's like, well, are you ready for your morning to get a whole lot better? And at that point, I kind of figured what was coming next. And... Like I said, it was kind of a surreal moment, um, kind of one of those things that doesn't really feel real at first, um, and then until you get here and get settled in, then you get adjusted and acclimated, but it was uh, it was great. Um, once I found the news, I called my girlfriend, I called my parents, my family, all my friends, and just kind of gave them the good news, and they were all uh, excited, super excited. You feel equally careful in the outfield field. Yeah, I'm I'm comfortable on a baseball field. It doesn't matter what glove I have on my hand, what position I'm at. As long as I'm playing baseball, I'm fine. Um, one thing I will say is that how you see Royce today is how he's been his entire life. Um, super energetic, super positive, always joking. Um, he's literally the same person today as he was then. How old, the first, how old would you guys have been that first time? I think we were 14. Yeah, 14 years old. Yeah, 14 years yeah, old. Mm -hmm. Of it. Did you know when you uh, signed up for a place to be lost from the ball players that you were setting yourself up for a quick year? Um... Honestly, I kind of just fell into place. I honestly wasn't looking to stay there. Just the apartments that I was at last year was kind of full and packed. But, I mean, it's pretty convenient now, you know? <laughs> Is it close enough to take, like, a running jump from your roof to uh, make it across the way? I'd probably die on the way. I'd probably <laughs> land somewhere around the uh, train tracks. But it's literally maybe, like, 30-second walk to the field. So, that's like I said, for my family, and whenever they come to see the games in Minnesota, it's super convenient for them. You're going with number 82, which is a cool number, but unusual for baseball. What are your 100%. thoughts on that? Uh, honestly, I don't really care what my number is. As long as it says twins on the front of the jersey, I'll be all right. And uh, Austin Martin, have you ever driven an Aston Martin? It's a little bit out of my, uh, my budget, uh, truthfully. <laughs> Maybe one day, you know? One day, but no, I've never driven an Aston Martin. That's funny that you bring that up because we were watching the game today at my in-laws' house at Easter there, and they live on the other side of town. And uh, my father-in-law is a big car guy. He's got a 1956 Packard Clipper wagon that apparently there's like six still in existence. A beautiful car. Mm -hmm. And then he's got a Studebaker. And so he hears the name Austin Martin. He's like, that's a car. And I'm like, all right, yeah, yeah. That's kind of the the Kurt experience watching uh, TV with him. But anyhow, uh, kind of funny that you went down that road. I think if things go well enough for him, maybe someday he will be able to drive one. Yeah. He just, uh, he needs to not run into the, the fence too much and take care of himself and give him a chance to feel the ball. And it'll be good. I thought, uh, I thought he, uh, you know, rolled with the questions pretty well and showed a sense of humor about himself. And, um, you know, we'll uh, hopefully he'll, give the, the, the twins a chance to win. He's uh, he's come through a lot physically in the last few years, injuring, I think, both of his arms at one point. Both of his UCLs uh, were uh, injured. And, and wrist uh, issues too, which is yes, hard for years. It is. So, you know, he's had to kind of deal with that and figure out how to, uh, you know, what kind of hitter he wants to be as far as power. And um, so I, I think his next three years, four years, are going to be better than the last three as far as his development goes. So excited. Uh, seems like a, a cool dude to have. Yeah. And I think the, the Blue Jays said, listen, we can have him or we can have Bo Bichette, but they basically look very, very similar. So that is some sick flow. It was, uh, as Ooh, the yeah. kids say, it was, uh, the hair was, I, I wasn't ready for it. I'd heard he had long hair, 
but it's very you know, wavy and long and uh it was uh you know kind of intoxicating a little bit it was uh it's it's a it's a good look i, I can't really pull it off myself i have you you did a nice job keeping your composure. It was like when I would talk to Brian Dozier back in the day with, you know, he'd 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 flip his hair back like that and have the stubble and yeah, he's a he's a handsome dude. By the yeah. way, I heard Tom Schreier's voice in there. Did you get to meet Tom? Uh oh yeah, from um, the uh, I'm forgetting the name of the place where he used to be. Zone coverage. Zone coverage. Yes, he's a good dude. He seems, like, he seems like a nice dude. Yeah. He, he was going to try touch base with you, but probably didn't. I don't know. He's he's a good dude, though. Anyhow, um, series wrap. Twins take two or three, certainly. Who's yeah. next? Who's next? It's Let's the Brewers. Two oh, that's right. Through. The Twins open the season with eight straight day games, so uh, no coffee necessary yet. But Brew Crew and then the Guardians, who – uh, just finished extended spring training by facing the A's. Um, pun intended. Sorry, the A's are just really bad. Uh, but they lost. I think Paul Blackburn pitched a really good game today. So, oh, the yeah. shoe is on the other foot now, isn't it? Guardians fans, they were all oh yeah, yeah. about uh, being two and zero, yippy and snippy and chippy and all that stuff. But I think if if you had, we're running out of time here. But if you had to tell me that one pitcher would finish the season on the Twins that's not on that team right now. I think Paul Blackburn's probably that guy. Not on the A's, you mean? I mean, a, a player who's not on the Twins right now, finishing oh. the year on the Twins. I think Paul Blackburn makes a ton of sense. That's uh, that's a guy. We talked about him before in the offseason as a possible trade target, but the A's, I think, didn't want to look like they were trading absolutely everybody away, so they're holding on to him for a little while longer. It's like when you're tearing down your house and you got to keep the chandelier. Anyhow, thanks, everyone, for hanging out with us. We'll be back for more Locked on Twins on the off day. But for Dave Brown, this is Brandon Warren signing off, saying thank you so much, and we'll see you tomorrow night.